we have got a problem today and every Yorkshireman knows the only way to solve a problem is to have some tea. So before we get started, I'll do it. Hey up everybody, welcome back to the Yorkshire Fab Shop. So when I say we've got a problem, it's not quite as dramatic as that, but we do have a slight issue with the lathe. Now those of you that have seen the lathe in action will appreciate that, yes, it's a bit old and tired and rough around the edges, but as far as, as far as the lathe goes, works well, does exactly what I need to do. I mean, it does get you thinking about what sort of life that machine has lived prior to you, me, whoever getting hold of it, because I, I guess, I think it's the best part of 70 years old, so it has lived a fair life. As a result, quite a lot of it is worn out. To be kind and this item is no different so if i drag it in we'll show you what the problem is so i'd like to welcome you to the tailstock we all know what this is we all know what they do simple bits of kit really useful if your lathe hasn't got one then you're really missing out big problem with this and i kind of identified it in the last video but it weren't really too much of a problem that I needed to worry about it because it is still usable. But our big problem with this is the wear, the age, the fact that it's been used and most likely abused. So if we get into it, I'll show you what the problem is. So I can hear a couple of you saying, well, what's the problem with that? It looks all right. And in the last video, you did in fact drill a few holes in that piece of steel and the drill seemed to grip all right. No real issues. Well, yeah, you'd be right to some extent because although there's a bit of surface damage on the end of here, uh, this has been battered a little bit. It's not in too disgusting condition considering its age until we look down the barrel. I'll just bring another light over there so you can see because it's uh, difficult to show you this. If I put that in there, get you close. Oh dear, oh dear, yes, we have some serious damage inside there. So there's been drills, centers, I don't know what else has been in there. There's been all sorts basically spinning, galling up that surface, and it's made a right mess. Now, as proven, yes, it did actually hold a drill all right. And if I grab a drill, we'll be able to see that the fit isn't awful but it isn't good enough now what is interesting to note is there's no um slot for drill drifts or any removal so this has obviously got an auto ejection feature pops the item out when you get to the end because the, th the thread of the screw will get to the end and, and shove it out but what that also means is any not so well fitting items like drills with tangs they won't have any chance of preventing that initial slip or rotation because obviously when you've got a slot the, the tang of the drill will sit in there i know we all know they they're not designed to drive off but when you touch onto a material that initial spin will be negated by the fact that the uh, tang is there and then once you get some pressure on the drill the drill will drive into the taper and it'll hold itself so i'll grab a drill and we'll have a look at the fit so I've got a drill with a ground shank, although it's not the cleanest. Hmm. So I've got a drill with a ground shank. Just giving it a quick, quick rub over with Scotch Brite just to clean the surface corrosion and uh, general detritus off it. If we drop it in there, you'd you'd almost be forgiven for thinking that that was a decent fit because it, it does seem to grab and obviously. Again, as proven, it, it does grab enough to put a hole in some steel. But when you start having a feel about, I know you won't see it or, or be able to appreciate the, the feel here, but I've pushed it home and, and it, it should it should have sort of seated. But I can feel that the drill is wobbling in the hole. Now, if I give it a bit more of a push, yes, it, it does bite up. So it does grab. But it should be a little bit better than that entering there 
So what our plans are, and what we're hoping to do today, is I've managed to find a reamer. So we're going to set this up, and we're going to ream ever so slightly. We're going to take such a small amount off it, it'll barely be noticeable. But we'll ever so slightly ream the inside of here and see if we can improve the surface condition of that bore, because, yes, it's terrible. We may need to do some post titivating we might have to do give it a little lap try and clean it because reamers are especially in this context they're not the nicest things to use of that size and, and the fact that the tapered mean they're going to be cutting over the whole length of the reamer and if you haven't got the rigidity of the setup just right or, or correct then it'll want to grab and and you know what it's like when you're trying to, to drill something with a heavy cut it can be difficult so we're going to put this Obviously, set it up in the lathe, but we'll put this back into the tailstock. Plan is we'll put the reamer into the chuck and we'll gently just feed it in and try and take a tickle off there. What we can do first, we can give this a blow check into there and just see how we're looking because, like I say, it has, it has grabs and I can't pull that out now, but it has got a decent grab, it's just not as good as I'd like it to be. So I've got uh, ground dead center this is brand new just open the packet for this so i know that that's well it should it should be good it should be the right angle and everything also got a bit of the old stewart's blue so i'm going to dab this up drop it in there pull it out see what the contact's like So we've got a relatively thin layer on there. I appreciate it's not as thin as it probably ought to be. But with this being so bad, if I put it on any thinner, you probably wouldn't see it. And don't forget the old saying, the more you blue, the less you do. So just saying. Oh, we've not got much contact on there, so it's rubbed off there. You can see the center line's rubbed off. See if I can get a shot inside there. I can see see some on the edge, you may well be able to see that. And it's touched in various points down the barrel, but there's a severe lack of any major blue in there. So see if I can get an angle in there, we'll have a look. I have managed to get a shot, actually, where you can see. We've got a little bit of contact right at the top of the barrel and there in this sort of orientation you can see a little bit more further down. We've got a lot of areas that aren't touching at all, obviously due to the damage. And then here there's, there's not a lot at all throughout. So we definitely want some work doing to it. Plan is from here. We're going to throw this back on the lathe as discussed. We're going to throw, put the four jar on, clock up our reamer. You'll see why that's important in a minute, a minute. And hopefully give this a tickle out. Not not too much. I'm only looking to improve it. I don't want to spoil it. I certainly don't want to do more damage than good here. So we'll throw that in there and fingers crossed we make it slightly better. This is the setup that we're having to use for this operation. In the chuck, I've got a four to four Morse taper extension. That's in the four jaw. So I've clocked this up to within zero one of a millimeter. So like half a thou, it's the best I've got. I haven't got any 10 thou clocks or anything smaller than a metric. So as near to as zero as possible. I've then clocked this end as well of the reamer. I had the center in to, to initially line it, um, clocked it up and it's still pretty good. It does flex a little bit as you'd expect. So I can't get it within 0 0.1, it's more like within 0 0.3 of a millimeter. But like I say, it does flex a little bit so not too worried about that. The important thing is with the center in, it doesn't deviate much when it's in to when it's out. So I know that that's virtually in the centre of the axis of rotation on the lathe, which is good because it means the bed's not worn. 
So his plan is to bring the tailstock over the reamer. I'm going to set the machine going in one of the slowest speeds I've got. 40 or 60 RPM is the slowest speeds I've got. Probably try 40. Don't want to be ripping material out. I'm going to apply some heavy cutting fluid, heavy lubricant, because I don't want that grabbing or ragging the inside of that quill. Give it a couple of couple of goes, couple of minutes, slowly ease in on the hand wheel, and then we'll pull out and we'll have a look, see what the condition of the, the bore is. Bit of Sherwood cutting compound goes really well on toast in the morning. That if you've uh, if you've got some spare, but it's a bit of a waste on toast. So I've taken that out of the lathe again, back on the bench, done another blow check and just have a look in there now. So granted it's not perfect and I think that's somewhat to do with the fact that the reamer is obviously multi-flute. So it looks like we're getting like, um, like an intermittent cut almost. I could improve that somewhat by giving it a light lap. But in comparison to before, that is, is, is about 100 times better. So you drop a drop the same ground centre dead centre in like we did before, and I, I can't get it out now. I've got to knock it out from behind. The only problem I've got, and I'll demonstrate here with this drill that I've got to handy, is now because I've removed quite a bit of material, when we pull that in, we actually hit the end of the drill before we fully enter the taper. So to remedy that, all I need to do is machine some off. And I expected that. I, I thought that would be the case because obviously as you remove material from the inside, this end naturally gets bigger and you need to compensate for that by removing material off the end of it. Now there's not going to be any issues doing that because there's nothing that retains this in there other than the screw and there's no collars or anything that will be machined off as a result of machining that material there. So I can throw that in the well, four jaw setup. I'll throw that in the four jaw, clock it in, face it off, take a couple of mil off. Jobs are good one. It's all back installed, it's all working well, happy days. If you're planning on doing this yourself, then just be prepared to lose some length of the quill in the tailstock, because we've had to remove quite a bit of material, more than I expected to be honest. But if we'd have removed all the damage in there, we'd have been losing even more. I've stopped because there's a bit of a trade-off between damage left in there, what's acceptable, and removing it all for the sake of it. Like I said, if we'd have removed any more damage, we'd have, we'd have probably been taking another, or oh, easy 10, another 10 mil off there, because it's surprising how short that is in comparison to how it was. We've probably lost five, six, seven mil off there, maybe. But overall, very happy with that result. That 
centre now grips a lot better than it did before and so do the drills it's just a case of dropping them in now and they automatically grab rather than having to give them a give them a bit of a tap beforehand like i said not that it didn't grab well enough before it's just going to be a lot better now so if you are planning on doing that like i said just be aware that you need a very rigid setup here you don't want this moving about you need to get your reamer absolutely bang smack in the center line of the axis of the lathe because otherwise you could ream that off center and that would be a disaster but generally speaking it's fairly simple fairly straightforward job and it's certainly something that you could try yourself if yours is as damaged as mine was hopefully you've enjoyed that just a quick one today but stay tuned for more so from your action fab shop thanks for watching see you next time